Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the Emax Hawk 5 Racing Quadcopter. The Emax Hawk 5 is available only in a bind and fly version. It comes with an FR Sky XM Plus receiver. In addition, it's built around the Magnum F4 stack, which I've reviewed in the past and also used it on one of my builds. And finally, it uses Emax LS2206 2300 KV motors. So now let's open the package and see everything we get inside. First of all, we'll get in the instructions manual, both for the F4 Magnum all-in-one FEV stack and for the FR Sky XM Plus receiver. We'll get in the quadcopter, which is the most important thing, of course, and it is a very beautiful quadcopter. We're gonna get to it in a minute. Two battery Velcro straps. These are not so high quality Velcro straps, and I think that Emacs could have done better. We get in two LHCP SMA Pagoda antennas. That's really nice from Emacs to include two of them. One is going to be connected to your FPV goggles and the second one is going to be connected to your quadcopter if you choose to use the SMA connector. We get in the instructions manual for the Foxeer Aero camera along with its OSD and some extra screws. Two sets of Evan 5 inch flow propellers. A bag with some extra screws and zip ties. An IPX2 SMA connector for the VTX. And finally, we also get in one spare arm. That's awesome. And I think this is the first ready to fly or bind and fly quadcopter that I've seen that comes with an extra arm. That's really good. And I think that other manufacturers should follow Emacs steps and include spare arms in their package, especially when you buy a complete set. The first thing you're going to notice about the Emacs Hawk 5 is that its build is extremely clean. I think this is the cleanest build I've seen so far and it's due to the fact that it uses the Emax Magnum FEV all-in-one stack. On the bottom of the stack, we can find a 30 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 EC board. On the center, an F4 flight controller. And then on top, on the left side, we can find a 48 channels VTX with a selectable output strength of 25 and 200 milliwatts. Unfortunately, it doesn't feature smart audio, so configuring it is done through the button over here. I'm going to show you how to configure it later in this video. And finally, on the right side, we can find an Afro Sky XM Plus receiver. You can see that both VTX and receiver are connected through the pins over here, so there are no extra wiring, which makes this build very clean. On the front, we can find the Foxeer Micro Aero FPV camera, which is an excellent camera, and it comes with a very sharp angle, so of course you can adjust it by just loosening the screws on the side and adjust it to your favorite angle. Emacs are known for their motors, so of course this quadcopter is using Emacs motors. These are the LS2206-2300 KV motors. I haven't tried them before, but their quality looks really good. On the back we can find this capacitor which is connected to the battery leads. This is a 25 volt 470 microfarad capacitor. And we have a pretty long battery wires and it, this is due to the fact that Emacs are giving you the option either to mount your battery on top or on the bottom, so you'll be able to reach both locations. The weight of the quadcopter is 281.7 grams, so this is an extremely light quadcopter. The thickness of the arms is 4.5 millimeters. The thickness of the top plate is 3 millimeters. And the thickness of both bottom plates is 2 millimeters. Binding the Hawk 5 to your Taranis is done by putting the Taranis on mode D16, channels 1 to 8 then hit bind and you'll need to connect the battery or connect the micro USB port to your computer while pressing this button over here so you won't need to disassemble the top part of the quadcopter just be careful when pressing this button because it's a little bit fragile so be careful not to press it too hard and don't use a too sharp object because otherwise this button is going to be ripped off so just power up the quadcopter while pressing this button and then the quadcopter is going to be bound after you finish binding it, just disconnect the battery or disconnect the flight controller from your computer, then power it up. And now you can see that this LED indicator over here lights up. After turning on the transmitter, you can see now that this red LED indicator is on, which means it's disconnected. And after I turn on my transmitter again, Welcome to OpenTF. You can see that it changed to this LED indicator, which means that the bound procedure was successful. By the way, one thing that I didn't mention before is that this quadcopter supports up to 4S LiPo batteries. Setting up the VTX is done by pressing the button over here. We can see that we have a nice cutout on the top, which will enable you to tell which channel, band and output strength you're currently using. Short pressing this button is going to switch between 8 channels. Long pressing it for about 2 seconds is going to let you choose between the available 6 bands. 
And finally, long pressing this button is going to toggle between 25 and 200 milliwatts. When the dot is present, it means that it's on 200 milliwatt. And when it's off, it means that now the output strength is 25 milliwatt. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over beta flight settings and then I'm going to head outdoors to see how this quadcopter performs. I'm going to test it with this linear antenna. I'm not going to use the SME adapter. Hopefully it's going to perform fine with this linear antenna, but we're going to see. And I'll see you in the end of this video in order to give you my conclusion.
overall I think that the Hawk 5 is one of the best Band and Fly 5 inch quadcopters you can get at the moment and that's probably one of the reasons it's sold out in many places. It comes pre-tuned so you don't have to mess with PIDs and I think it performed quite well with and without my Runcom 3 and also the VTX was surprisingly good even though it's only 200mV and my previous experience with this specific VTX wasn't amazing I think that now it is much better and I could get to a couple of hundred meters without any issues the reason I didn't get too far with this quadcopter is because the firmware of the XM Plus receiver does not support RSSI and I need to reflash it in order to gain the RSSI feedback and I didn't feel comfortable to fly this quadcopter far without having the RSSI feedback so my advice to you if you need an FR Sky version is to either flash the XM Plus receiver with the latest firmware or even better buy the plug and play version and add an RSSI receiver you're also going to get the RSSI feedback on your remote controller which is better than just on your on-screen display. I also advise you to get one of these antennas from Fios FPV even though they're not cheap they improve the FPV feed and finally if you do not wish to mount your battery on top short the battery lead and also secure them with a zip tie to one of the arms because you don't want the battery leads to get into your propellers. So overall if you're debating which button fly racer to get I think the Hawk 5 is going to be an excellent choice. I just got the TBS Oblivion I'm going to review it in the next week or so and it costs $300 so it's a little bit more expensive than the Hawk 5. After reviewing it I'm going to tell you which one in my opinion is better. The Asian Wizard TS215 is still a very good choice, however I think that it's worth to add $50 and get the Hawk 5. It was just on sale for $150 and then it's going to be a little bit difficult to decide if it's worth the $100 difference, but $50 you should definitely prefer the Hawk 5 over the TS215. By the way, Emacs recently announced that they are releasing 6 inch arms, so hopefully I'm going to be able to get them soon and then I'm going to upgrade this quadcopter and see how it performs with 6 inch propellers. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.